I think it's because of people's prayers wanting a job. I really, really do. We've been raising poultry since 1954. My father started it, and then uh, I continued. And then also my son has continued on for the third generation. We were mostly growers up until about 2003. And then uh, the market for raising poultry and selling them to the processors keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. In 2002, my son was getting out of college and coming back to be in the family business. And we basically were going out of business. Him and I talked and we thought, well, let's try to get into processing. We found a plant down in Los Angeles. As soon as I told my wife about it, she says, if you do that, we're going to get a divorce. I said, why? She says, I know you. You're going to just go down there and you're going to have every excuse under the book why you can't come home. So just pack your bags and get out of here. So she called my son and said, you better find something up here. It's about the 10th of June. I haven't signed the contract because the wife hasn't forgot her promise to me that she's going to divorce me. And on a Tuesday morning, I wake up and I've got a toothache that's killing me. It was so bad I could cry. I had to get to the dentist that day and my wife says, well, I've got an appointment at two o'clock. So I went and saw the dentist at two. He fixed the tooth, it doesn't hurt. And I was in Fresno, so I went and saw a friend of mine that I haven't seen in two years. His name is John, he's a banker. And I told John, I said, John, I says, I've got to rent this place down in Los Angeles. I says, but my wife still is telling me that we're gonna have trouble with that. He says, Rick, he says, last Friday, I got a call from another bank. And they were telling me that they're calling the note on a plant that's over in Sanger. I went and saw the place on Thursday that week, and we bought it on Monday. The next year, we're starting construction on the plant, and uh, in April, uh, I hired about eight of the guys that were uh, working at the plant last year, the year before, and we're changing it over to processed chickens and turkeys. And in April, I tell the guys, hey, middle of July, we're gonna need about 50 people because we're gonna have turkeys and chickens in here to process. So I didn't put a sign on the front door, help wanted. I didn't put an ad in the paper, help wanted. I didn't do anything like that. And we're on a dead end street, so it's hard to find. And between the 1st of April and the 1st of July, I had 1,500 people walk through the door and ask me for a job. I don't know how the word got out. And that's when I sat on the curb and I realized our purpose was to make jobs. And because of that, that's why we were guided to Sanger. We've been guided that way many times because starting a processing plant in California is somewhere between dumb and stupid. People don't do that for the economics. It just doesn't work. They build them in Georgia, they build them in Alabama, they build them in Mississippi, but they don't build them in California anymore. Our goal is to sell Mary's chickens, but our purpose is to make jobs. And that's the reason we've been successful in California because we basically are doing the right thing. All of the chickens we raise, we call them free range. People back in the old days knew that free range meant it was something different, something more healthy. We make sure they have water outside and also make sure they have shade. So as you can see right here, and then also we'd like to have some vegetation, which on this farm we have a really good opportunity where we can make good vegetation for them. These shades that we have here is to protect them from any birds that are flying over because that'll scare them. Because they don't like the, uh, the hawks or the owls. We were trying to figure out a name for what we're gonna call our chickens or turkeys. Is it Pittman Farms? You know, what is it? 
because everybody uses their last name, it seems. I was thinking about it and I realized my wife has got a lot of trouble with MSG and the other things that are in food that causes her trouble with her health. We knew that we wanted to do something that was very similar to what Mary needs. So one night, I thought, you know what, let's call it Mary. <laughs> We're looking for a pretty steady cut all the way around. Just so happened, the, uh, the year we started Mary's Chickens and Turkeys was our 25th wedding anniversary. My wife says, most people get diamonds or something for their 25th. I get a turkey and a chicken named after me. That's our joke in the family, being a farmer's. Don't be a farmer's wife. You've got to be careful what you get for your 25th. That's the truth. <laughs> So the feed we have here, right here, is the uh, organic food. It's got corn and soybean meal, and then it's got uh, some vitamins, minerals, and some calcium and phosphorus added to it. This helps the birds to grow, and uh, to be totally honest with you, the organic birds do better than our conventional birds that we raise. They perform better and they stay healthy, and I really don't know the true reason other than it, they're eating organic feed. You know, the one thing that uh, was kind of surprising to us, and my wife especially, is on our turkeys that we sell at Thanksgiving, I put our phone number on the back of the bag so that people can call us and tell us if they have any questions or problems as far as cooking their turkey. Well, on Thanksgiving Day now, we get hundreds and hundreds of calls, and they're all wanting to talk to Mary. But it also helps us all year round because they have a way of getting a hold of us. And Mary's been able to really know what is going forward as far as what the customers are looking for. When we were doing free range, she knew already that people were looking for organic. Then she saw where customers are looking for animal welfare. Animal welfare is a really big deal. It's really important that you're being good to your animals and you're treating your animals right so they have a good place to live and they're comfortable. Animal welfare goes from also at the ranch into the processing. So we make sure that we have animal welfare there also. Those types of things and those attributes are very important to make sure that we've got something that's better. So we went over to Europe, and Europe is very much advanced than we are as far as raising poultry in humane ways and making sure that it's safe for their customers. Most of the chickens over there are air chilled. So when we saw air chilling over in Europe, we were doing it a little bit and then we put in a new system and the thing that air chilling does is it takes about three and a half hours. That three and a half hours, the bird chills from the outside to the inside. So it holds all the moisture, it holds all the flavor inside of that bird. And that time that takes right there is a little bit of aging of the bird, so that's why it also adds to the flavor and taste on the uh, air chilled chicken. So that's why these chickens are so much preferred versus the regular water chilled chicken because it doesn't have the chlorine and it doesn't dilute the taste. The next thing we saw over there was sedation stunning. They do not do electrical stunning over there because they didn't feel that was humane. So we studied it over there for a couple of years and realized that that was the right thing we needed to do. It's something your customer really is concerned about animal welfare and how do we treat the animals when we get to the processing plant. When we do sedation stunning, the birds are picked up on the farm, they're put into baskets, and those baskets is where the bird stays, and the bird is not touched by human hands again. As it goes through the sedation stunning, it's just the use of CO2, and CO2 is what you exhale, and as you get too high a level of CO2, it makes you sleepy and a little bit more CO2 makes you more sleepy, and a little bit more CO2 makes you more sleepy. So it's not something that panics you, that you think you're, you're suffocating, it's something slow, where you get sleepier and sleepier, and it's about a five minute process that we take them through so that we can get them all the way deep 
into a deep, deep, deep sleep before we start the process. So our first real customer was Whole Foods and with the name of Mary's down in Los Angeles and the fact that they were air chilled, we had quite a few restaurants and uh, hotels that started using Mary's and they liked it and they actually were kind enough to put the Mary's name on their menus. So we're very excited to have those customers. They're very loyal to us and we appreciate them very much. And it's a very big part of our business today as far as food service. And we appreciate that.